Hello everyone, welcome to Jargus Range Review. This time we'll be looking at the 11th episode of Power Rangers Beast Morphers, Tools of the Betrayed. Now this one resumes the data chip saga that started at the last episode. And this time it's Blaze's turn to try. And he doesn't try for long, because the Rangers send him running when they break his machine to create a Robotron. Almost immediately after he appears in Coral Harbor. Evox doesn't want him doing anything because he's so disappointed in him. So Roxy gets to have another turn at it. And she's more than happy to take advantage of this opportunity. And she notices that Scrawzel's machine can instantly repair a device. So she asks him to load up the virus with something that can do just the opposite. Totally dismantle something. And so she goes off to do just that. In the meantime, rangers are setting Giga Drone detectors around the city, so that they won't be caught by surprise like with Jiltron. And even Ben and Betty are putting one up together, for a total of six around the city. Now Zoe comes to pick up Ben and Betty after they finish their work, however Roxy is nearby on the ledge above, having just created a new Robotron called Tooltron, made out of a wrench. And a test of its ability made a bike dismantle, and it was just about to shoot her if it to take out her communicator along with her morpher, but she moved, and it missed, and took out the gauge room detector. And the three head back to Grid Battle Force, where when Nate tries to activate them all, they notice that one is missing. And then the three of them come in with ice cream, thinking all is well. But no, all is not well. I mean, Robbie thinks they were goofing off instead of doing their job. But Devin has another problem. He sees Ben and Betty's detector in pieces, and then he deduces something from earlier in the episode I didn't mention. And that was that Devin got a new VR headset, but Blaze showed up before he could use it. And trusted Ben and Betty to get it back to Great Battle Force safely. But Betty wanted to try it on for herself, and it instantly booted into a surfing game, which also had a shark. So she ran around inside the gym with it. <laughs> and she tripped and fell head first, so she got hurt in the head, and also knocked over Ben but also broke the headset. Now they knew that Devin would not be happy about that, especially with them. So Zoe decided to take the blame for it, because she pretty much knew that Devin had a much softer reaction taking it from her, rather than those two fools that he entrusted with it. But of course then, he really is not happy. I mean, he don't act like angry, I mean, he looks upset, but he just talks really stern, because he don't like how his friend lied to him and breed at some distrust, with some dishonesty, even if she was trying to help Ben and Betty get out of a bad situation. So he walks off with the other rangers to fix the Gigadrone detector. So yeah, a bit of a misunderstanding here, and it's mostly Betty's fault. <laughs> now while the four are working on the repair, Roxy decides to attack. Apparently she didn't go anywhere, I didn't cause any trouble, she just waited for them to make an appearance out in the open. And uses the Tooltron, I almost said Drilltron, <laughs> he was the last episode, to break both their blasters and the transporters so they can't teleport in new weapons. So that's just great. And Roxy orders him to go find the Yellow Ranger before she can get help. Now the Rangers try to fight Roxy, but she decides to get out of there when they start using all their powers against her. After the Rangers contact Jax, they find out that Zoe probably went to the park where she has already had her morpher dismantled. And so I was surrounded by both the uh, Tooltron and a bunch of Tronics. So she's not in a good position at all. Fortunately, the rest of the team arrives already morphed. And Cruz comes with a new morpher for her, along with New Year for the Rangers to transport their weapons. Oh yeah, and Devin does figure out the truth when their weapons are dismantled. But that's no time to talk about right now. There's a battle to win. And it's not much of a battle. Just a few shots of the Tronics. Then the rangers just use all the blasters to destroy them, and then once more to finish off a uh, Tooltron. So Roxy escapes, but she forgets to take the data chip from his remains. To which Scrozzle has to come and take it, and he's mad at her for forgetting it. <laughs> now he's not entirely mad because he has a new trick up his sleeve, and that is using a new Giga Drone based off a of Tooltron. Except this time, it has a Delta model attached to it that just like splits off from it. So it's a two for one of the same uh, Giga Drone. Rangers go straight into Megazord mode, and Nate's Zord also has a battle mode, the Vector Zord. However, this time, Nate's made a new combination where it can combine with a uh, Steel Striker Zord to be the Striker Megazord. And this bug robot just has two giant laser blasters on both hands, 
and it just knocks the two Gigatrons against each other back to back. At which point the Ranger has them cornered, so they both use the finishing strike. The Beast has Megazord just doing his jump kick to further push them into each other with maximum force. While the two brothers just take the two blasters and fire giant laser beams at it, and that destroys it. So that's great, we have two out of three rangers taking their powers, and we don't know what the next plan is. Is it gonna be Scrav is it gonna be Scrazzle, Evox, Blaze, Roxy that tries a new plan? Nothing's been decided, nothing's been hinted at. So that's a complete mystery that we'll probably find out next time. And the end scene is back at Riptide Gym, where Devin buys Roxy a smoothie to make up for not trusting her. Of course, Zoe apologizes too for not being so honest, even though she had good intentions. So yeah, they both learned their lesson to lighten up a little. And Ben and Betty come bearing good news. They've repaired the headset and gave it back to Devin. And they warn him to watch out for that shark, because when he jumps to avoid it, his whole body moves and he lands on a skateboard. Which is actually the exact same skateboard that Chase had it back in Dino Charge. That's a very nice detail, I like that. So he goes flying, he falls over, the headset goes flying, but Ben and Betty actually do very good this time. They dive and catch it, it's in one piece. This is a change from usual where they're the butt of a joke, this time they're part of the conflict and they're also part of the final resolution, which is very nice, I like to see that. So overall this was a really good episode. And I love how Blaze just keeps putting to the sidelines, even though he's supposed to be a major villain. Like this is supposed to be his episode to shine for once and he gets screwed over right from the beginning. <laughs> Like, Moxie just keeps getting all the screen time. And I can't blame him because Blaze's character, or at least the way he's portrayed, isn't all too interesting. But Roxy, she's really playful and charismatic, but also completely evil. So it just makes her a lot of fun to watch on screen. So this is definitely a good episode to watch. I enjoyed it. Now, I'm interested who they're going to target next on the data chip. Is it going to be one of the Bug Brothers, or is it going to be Devin, the last of our original three Ranger team? I guess we'll find out next time, and I'm looking forward to it a lot. Until then, this has been Jargus. Thanks for watching, and let the power protect you. Justice we fight with peace, more than life.